The world of Linux is like a mysterious land full of possibilities and discoveries. For beginners, the first step into this new world can seem overwhelming at first. But it's also a world full of freedom, flexibility and creative development. Choosing the right Linux distribution, or distro for short, is crucial because it determines the character and functionality of the digital universe you will explore. Ready? Let's get started. When I think back to my own beginnings in the Linux world, I remember the curiosity and desire to learn more about the open source community. As someone who made this journey over 20 years ago, I now look at the many distros with a knowledge of their diversity and differences. In this video, I'd like to share my experience and highlight distros that are particularly beginner friendly, the kind of Linux I would choose if I were to embark the journey as a beginner again today. The Linux world is like a giant puzzle with many different pieces. Each distro represents a unique piece of this puzzle. From colorful and inviting interfaces to minimalistic and elegant designs. Choosing the right distro is like choosing the right tool for the job. It comes down to specific needs, skills and preferences. In this video I pick out 7 of the top 10 distros from DistroWatch which we compare and scrutinize. Amex Linux, Linux Mint, Endeavor OS, Debian, Ubuntu, Soren OS and Fedora. Each of them has its own metrics and particularly tailored to certain types of users. Let's dive into the fascinating world of Linux together and discover which distro would be the right choice for today's Linux beginner. Or to put it in another way, if I were a newcomer, which distro would I choose today? And now, after this introducing words, let's have an overview. MX Linux. The perennial favorite at the top. MX Linux has been number one on DistroWatch for what feels like an eternity. It is the fusion of Debian with a Swiss Army knife. It combines the stability and quality of Debian with an extensive toolbox also known as the MX Tools. On top of that there is a design guideline from MX Linux. The desktops are therefore customized with themes etc. Let's have an overview. The alignment. It is user friendly, it is stable and resource saving. It is based on Debian stable. The primary desktop environment is XFCE, but there are also other editions such as KDE Plasma. The target group of MX Linux are users looking for a stable and user friendly distribution with good resource management capabilities, especially for older hardware. There are some features, system configuration tools, comprehensive software selection, live system with optional installation and MX tools for system management. Next distribution, Linux Mint, friendly, familiar and simple. Linux Mint is like Ubuntu's friendly neighbor. It's familiar, welcoming and provides an excellent environment for Linux beginners. And by the way, it's not without reason that Linux Mint is the basis of my Udemy course, which deals specially with switching to Linux. But it's in German language, so it's maybe not the scope of all of my audience here. Let's have an overview. Alignment. It is user-friendly, it is elegant and, of course, stable. Linux Mint is based on two platforms. On the one hand side there is the Ubuntu based edition and on the other hand side there is the Debian based edition called LMDE that stands for Linux Mint Debian Edition. The desktop environment is Cinnamon by default. This is an in-house developed desktop environment and as alternatives there is Mate and XFCE available. The target group is new Linux users who want a familiar and easy to use environment. The features of Linux Mint are proprietary codexes and drivers pre-installed. There is an own software management, it's called a software manager and there is a ton of customization options for the desktop interface. Next one, Endeavor OS, the better arch, 
Endeavor OS is based on Arch Linux and integrates 100% of Arch rolling release bases. However, unlike Arch, it offers a graphical and by that simple installation process and various smaller helpers. Let's check the alignment. It's a rolling release for advanced users. It is based on Arch Linux. The desktop environment, nah, there is no standard desktop environment, but it offers a variety of options during installation. It is some kind of separated between offline installation and online installation. If you choose the offline installation, it is installed the desktop environment that is in the live mode. If you choose online installation, then you have a selection of different desktop environments that will be installed during the installation process. The target group are advanced users looking for a lightweight and customizable distribution with a rolling release model. The features of Endeavor OS are a simple installation process compared to Arch only installations, support for Arch user repository, AUR for short, and maximum customizability. Next distro, Debian, the reliable rock in the surf. Debian is one of the oldest Linux distributions. Debian is a widely used Linux distribution known for its stability, universality and commitment to open source principles. The distribution is maintained and supported by a dedicated community of developers worldwide. Let's check the overview. The orientation, it is stable, it is universally applicable and open source. Debian is based on its own code base. As desktop environment, there is no standard desktop environment, but there are many available during the installation process. The target group is servers, developers, experienced users who value stability and software freedom. The features of Debian is a slower update cycle for stability, broad hardware support and widely used in the server sector. Next distro, Ubuntu, the entry into the Linux world. If I could rewind and go back to the beginning of my Linux journey, Ubuntu would undoubtedly or probably be my first choice. Why? Well, Ubuntu offers a welcoming environment for beginners and has a huge helpful community. Let's check the overview. The orientation is user-friendly, versatile and it is for desktop and server. It is based on Debian. As desktop environment, there is GNOME by default, but there are also several official flavors. For example, Kubuntu if you prefer KDE, or Xubuntu if you prefer XFCE, or Ubuntu Mate if you prefer Mate desktop environment, and so on. The target group is a broad audience from beginners to experienced users, desktop as well as server users. The features of Ubuntu are extensive software selection, easy installation and updating, long-term support LTS for the stable version. Next distro, Sorin OS, Linux that looks like Windows. Sorin OS is the perfect choice for those who want to switch from Windows to Linux without feeling lost. And here's the overview. The orientation is user-friendly. It is modern and especially good for Windows switchers. It is based on Ubuntu LTS. The desktop environment is the Sorin desktop and it is based on GNOME Shell. The target group are users who want to switch from Windows to Linux and looking for a familiar user interface. The features of Sorin OS are simple user interface with Windows-like design, many pre-installed applications for everyday use and tasks. The last distro is Fedora, the latest technology every six months. Fedora is a part of the Red Hat ecosystem. That means all new developments are put in place into Fedora, then merged to CentOS and after a while it is merged to RHEL. That means what is developed in Fedora today will receive RHEL a couple of months or years maybe. That means if you would like to have the latest technology, Fedora is your place to go. Let's check the overview. The orientation, innovative, progressive for developers and enthusiasts. It is based on its own code base. And what's about the desktop environment? It is GNOME by default, but there are several spin options. That means like Ubuntu has its flavors, Fedora has its spins. That means there's a Fedora KDE spin, Fedora XFCE spin, and so on. The target group of Fedora are developers, technology enthusiasts who want to test the latest technologies and functions. The characteristics are short release cycles, focus on open source software, integration of the latest technologies and functions. My entry into the Linux world was in the year 2003 with SUSE Linux, Red Hat and Mandrake Linux. 
It was an educational journey for me. Each distribution brought its own strength and idiosyncrasies, and each opened doors for me to different aspects of the Linux ecosystem at the time. SUSE impressed with German precision and a solid user experience, while Red Hat immersed me in the world of business-driven distros. Mandrake Linux brought color and playfulness to my Linux experience and showed me that Linux can be accessible for everyone, not just for geeks or nerds. Today, SUSE, Red Hat and Mandrake are no longer the main players in the Linux world of the Linux distros. No distro exists in the form it did back then, New distros have emerged and the open source community has fortunately evolved. Nevertheless, my journey with these distributions remains a significant milestone that has deepened my appreciation for the diversity and community-driven nature of Linux. It was the beginning of a journey that continues to this day and I look forward to the future developments in this fascinating world of Linux. The world of Linux distributions is large and diverse and there is no single answer to the question of which is the best. The choice depends on individual needs. Ubuntu and Linux Mint are great starting points for beginners. Depending on which operating system you have used before, I would recommend one or the other. If you previously used Windows, then I recommend Linux Mint. But if you are using Mac OS, then I recommend Ubuntu LTS. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Linux Mint comes with a Windows-like desktop and Ubuntu initially goes its own way with the bar on the left of the screen, but this can be converted into a dock so that we are getting closer to macOS. Ultimately, the best way to find the right distro for you is to try it out. Install different distros and virtual machines or as a dual boot system if you want and discover which one best suits your style and requirements. But always keep in mind, if you use dual boot, it could be tricky if you want to delete Linux afterwards because it could influence your bootloader. So be a little bit careful if you don't know what you do Then I recommend try in virtual machines, for example, VirtualBox. The Linux community is open, supportive and ready to guide you on your journey. So grab your keyboard, download a distro and dive into the fascinating adventure of Linux. If you are not up to that, then I would recommend Linux Mint or Ubuntu. I hope this video was able to give you some orientation to one or the other. If so, please subscribe to Linux content, give me a thumbs up and activate the bell to be informed as soon as there is new content. Many thanks to all supporters for their donations. If you would like to support this project, you can do this via a YouTube channel subscription, for instance. Thank you for the kind intention, ladies and gentlemen. Take care and hopefully see you next time. Peace.